schools near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have opened for the first time since Japan's March 11th disaster. They're located in Minamisoma, just outside the 20-kilometer evacuation zone around the damaged facility. Teachers are ready to start teaching again. It's the lack of students that's creating concerns. Susumu Kojima has the story. Haramachi Daisan Elementary is one of five schools reopening their doors today. But following Japan's nuclear accident, back to class is a little different this time around. For one thing, children are arriving by car. That's not what you'd see on a normal school day in Japan. Students usually walk in on their own. The school has asked parents to bring their kids by car. They are trying to avoid unnecessary radiation exposure. Once classes start, children will stay inside for the day. Outdoor activities are out of the question for now. Radiation is invisible, so I'm concerned that there might be areas that haven't been cleaned up yet. The Japanese government lifted its evacuation advisory for Minami Soma late last month. Workers decontaminated Haramachi Daisan before it reopened. They removed topsoil from the playground and power washed surfaces. It's inside where you will notice the changes. Only about 180 children have come back to class. That's a third of what the student population was before the nuclear accident. Number isn't expected to change in the near future. Many people who left this city are still concerned about the levels of radiation around their homes. Reopening schools is a step forward, but some parents won't bring back their children until the rest of Minamisoma is considered safe. Decontaminating the city remains the biggest challenge. Susume Kojima, NHK World, Minamisoma, Japan. The Japanese government and Tokyo Electric Power Company say the cold shutdown of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant will be achieved by the end of this year. A month earlier than they had originally announced. The information will be included in a revised timetable for containing the nuclear crisis that will be issued on Monday. The revision comes after temperatures around reactors 1, 2, and 3 drop to less than 100 degrees Celsius, and the amount of radioactive material being emitted has decreased to about half the level of a month ago. The government and TEPCO say the latest survey showed estimated radiation levels of about 100 million becquerels per hour. They also say measures to achieve a state of stable shutdown are progressing steadily. In addition, they announced that a giant polyester covering for the number one reactor building will be completed by the end of October. Goshi Hosono, the minister in charge of the nuclear disaster, said in September that they would try to achieve cold shutdown by the end of this year. Operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says the water injection system using external pipes is most likely to cause problems in the future. The system was built as an emergency response to the crisis after the March 11th disaster. Tokyo Electric Power Company has calculated the risks that could stop the supply of cooling water and cause more damage to the reactor cores. TEPCO analyzed seven scenarios in which a cold shutdown is undermined due to the water supply halting for more than 18 hours. A cold shutdown means the reactor temperature is below 100 degrees Celsius and stable. The scenarios include damage to the water injection system and external power outages. TEPCO found that the highest risk involves the water injection system being swept away by a massive tsunami and stopping the water supply to the reactors. The second most dangerous scenario is where the system is destroyed and it fails to resume. The company found that the outside pumps and pipes are ten times more likely to sustain damage than conventional ones inside the building. TEPCO plans to reinforce the emergency facilities to maintain the water supply in case of a huge tsunami. 
The city of Fukushima, about 60 kilometers from the crippled nuclear plant, has started to remove radioactive materials from all the houses in the city. The decontamination work began on Tuesday in an area with 360 households where relatively high levels of radiation have been measured. Under the plan, professional cleaners commissioned by the city will scrub the radioactive substances from roofs and ditches with high-pressure equipment. The topsoil on gardens will be removed. Roads used by school children and forests near residential areas will also be decontaminated. The city will ask residents and volunteers to do some of the work. The plan aims to lower radiation levels to one microsievert per hour or lower in all 110,000 households in the city in the next two years. But how the contaminated sludge will be disposed of has yet to be determined. The government is under pressure to come up with a solution soon. Controlling Fukushima Daiichi is one job. Cleaning up the fallout from the accident is another. Part of that process includes temporarily storing contaminated materials, such as soil, and that's sparking a backlash. Senior officials from the central government and Fukushima Prefecture met on Monday to talk about that issue. Local officials say that they can set up temporary storage sites for contaminated material unless they know when it will be removed to midterm storage facilities. Japan's nuclear crisis minister, Goshi Hosono, says the government will release a timetable this month. The issues of how long the waste will be kept at temporary dumps and how it will be stored after that are both very difficult. The Japanese government will make its decision and explain it in a way that will be clear to people. After the meeting, Fukushima Governor Yuhei Sato talked about the compensation plan for people who have been affected by the nuclear accident. He says the current procedure puts the victims at a disadvantage. They have to complete long application forms to submit to Tokyo Electric Power Company. Reconstruction Minister Tatsuo Hirano says the process may not be fair and must be revised somehow. The Japanese government is considering easing restrictions on U.S. beef imports. Currently, beef from cattle 20 months or younger are allowed to, into the country, but the age limit may be raised to 30 months. The restrictions were put in place to prevent mad cow disease from reaching the Japanese market. The condition is also referred to as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSC. Tainted beef was discovered in 2003 during inspections and a complete ban was imposed. It was partially lifted two years later. Meat from cattle 20 months or younger or are allowed in, but with the brains and the spinal cords removed. The government says the restriction should be eased further. It says the age stipulation is stricter than in other countries. No cattle has tested positive for BSC in the U.S. for four years, and the number of cases has plunged worldwide. The new policy would be in line with standards adopted by numerous other countries. The government is also considering easing beef imports from Canada, also bound by the same restrictions as the U.S. It's also thinking of resuming imports from France and the Netherlands. The BSE situation has calmed down a lot globally compared to 20 years ago. We should inform consumers about the global situation of BSE. Controlling those reactors means putting them into cold shutdown. That's when the their temperature stays below 100 degrees Celsius and stays stable, of course. Officials with the Japanese government and Tokyo Electric Power Company now confirm that they will ha that will happen before the end of the year, a month ahead of schedule. The details are included in their revised timetable for containing Japan's nuclear crisis. The report states that the temperatures around reactors 1, 2, and 3 dropped below 100 degrees at the end of last month. It also says the latest readings show Fukushima Daiichi is emitting about 100 million becquerels per hour of radioactive material. That's about one eight millionth the level when the crisis began in March and about half of what it was a month ago. 
The revised timetable states additional radiation levels in areas just outside the plan should be about 0.2 millisieverts per year at the most. The government is aiming to lift the evacuation orders for the 20-kilometer no-entry zone and the areas outside that zone. The reactors must be in cold shutdown and the levels of radiation must be lower. The kilogram is one unit of measure that people have long relied on. But now the international standard is likely to be reviewed for the first time in 120 years. Scientists of the world will look at alternative ways to define the standard during the General Assembly of the Member States of the Treaty of the Meter in Paris, which will start on Monday. Currently, the standard is the international prototype kilogram, a platinum and iridium alloy mass about four centimeters high. It's kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, or BIPM, in a suburb of Paris. It's been used to, when making scales and instruments for measuring weight since the end of the 19th century. However, it has lost a slight amount of weight when it was cleaned, and its susceptibility to change over time is a matter of concern. One of the alternative ways to define the standard unit was developed by a group of Japanese scientists. National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology developed a method that uses the number of atoms to define weight. Mitsuru Tanaka, a member of the International Committee of the BIPM, which will decide the new standard, said the existing unit was not highly accurate at the level of very small units such as a microgram. If a new standard is adopted, it will contribute to the advancement of science and technology, including nanotechnology and biotechnology. The Assembly will vote on whether the standard should be revised on Friday, the last day of the Assembly. A fruit grower in the Fukushima nuclear disaster region has won an award by the UN Food Agency for her contribution to advances in agriculture. The UN Food Agriculture Organization recognized 62-year-old Satoko Anzai as a model farmer. She operates a farm in Fukushima City and is the first Japanese to be awarded by the FAO. The award ceremony was held in Bangkok, Thailand on Monday. Thai Princess Maha Chakri Sirinton presented the award. Anzai grows peaches, apples and other fruit with her husband and son. She's known for her pioneering work in developing chemical-free cultivation methods with high yields. She has also organized a nationwide network that studies agricultural management from a woman's standpoint. The FAO says it hopes that Anzai's win will boost the spirits of those suffering from the March 11th disaster and subsequent nuclear crisis. <laughs> Anzai's home and warehouse were damaged in the quake and tsunami, but she offered food and support to those who fled their homes near the crippled nuclear power plant.